Thank you for watching this short video. And the theme of this video is Wounded Hearts Restored. Hearts wounded by man's inhumanity to man are restored by the love of a generous, omnipotent God. And if you truly wish to receive healing of mind, body and spirit and restore your wounded heart to wellness and wholeness, there is hope. And yes, we live in a beautiful world, don't we? A world that's been given to us as a gift from God, to embrace God through the natural world. And I guess that's the joy for me of being a Franciscan. But I'm also turned on by the spiritualities of the Celts, the early monastics, Columba, Aidan, Cuthbert, Patrick, as well as Theresian spirituality, the great mystic Teresa of Avila. But what I want to share with you is this. Many of us convince ourselves that our woundedness is self-imposed or, as many would have us believe, it is past life stuff and we have to get on with it. If your heart is wounded and you believe in a loving God, then healing is God's gift to you. It is part of your birthright and if it's for your highest good. But you know, God who is a God of love, God is not a tyrant as predicted by many who are opposed to God. God is a God of love and God has an agenda and that agenda is that we are all healed, restored, forgiven and that we can come to Agape, the festival of celebration with joy in our heart. But many choose not to surrender their heart, hence it remaining wounded and alienated from a God of love. But you have the power. Yes, you have. You've been given the keys to unlock the mystery of God's love. Never mind the secret code and the Moses code. You have those keys within you. They're impregnated in your soul's DNA and they are God's gift to your heart today. And all you have to do in order to activate those keys for you to have healing and be restored to wellness and wholeness is to surrender. That's not to say that you're handing over the control to God. No, you're surrendering your heart to love. And once you surrender your heart to God's love, you accept that personal invitation to allow God heal you. But many would say, oh, but your God knows he's God. Why can't he do it anyway? Well, that is, that is so wrong to say that. And God who is God and who gave us free will would never dream of interfering with our free will, now would he? And the reason why so many have wounded hearts today is because they have not acknowledged the existence of God in their life. And so many young children, in fact nine out of ten, grow up not even knowing that there is a God. And out of those nine, 99.9% .9 whose hearts are wounded, adrift on an open sea, of discouragement and fear, violence, anger, 
they inevitably end up in trouble, all because their parents refuse to surrender their heart to love. So the wounded heart restored is God's free gift to you and me today. And I truly do believe that even though one may not believe in God, God who is creator of all is knocking on our heart every day through synchronicity. What do I mean by synchronicity? Well, for example, you may get in your car and drive to work and suddenly you see something or you have a deja vu. And you think, oh, yeah. Or it may be that you're out walking your dog or just having a gentle stroll by the sea and admiring the waves of the ocean. Or it may be you're sat at home and you see something on the television or you're you have a phone call from someone and they happen to mention something you think, hey, this is too close for comfort. God will speak through the airways, through people, through events and circumstances for us to reawaken our heart to love. And God uses every situation that's possible. Nothing is impossible for God. Why? Because God is God. And how disappointing it must be for God, who never explains or shares with us individually, how disappointed he must be even today, that of all his creation, a few are willing to surrender. And of those who do surrender, then comes the greatest challenge of all. Who do you trust? And because you may have surrendered your heart to Jesus and your life to Jesus, doesn't say that you are a follower of Jesus. To be a follower of the Barefoot Galilean, it involves embracing a new way of life. It involves taking responsibility for your life, for your mind, for your body and for your spirit. And when you take responsibility for all three, then there's a fusion of energy, a fusion of love. And that love inspires you to acknowledge that if you have a wounded heart, that you will bring that heart to God in silence and you will use your gift of free will and say, hey God, I need your help. And once you make that positive intention, God hears you. Think of the prodigal son. Oh yes, the eldest brother was a good bro a good son. He abided by the rules. He, saved, he, he respected the boundaries. He did everything to the letter of the law. And the son, the prodigal son, went away with his savings, he cashed in his, his premiums and his life insurance that God had set aside for him, and he squandered it. Oh yeah, he had a great time in Las Vegas, on the casinos, on the GGs. And then he fell on hard times. And he realized he was wounded. He was missing his father's love. Oh yes, he may have slept with every, every woman and call girl in town. But having used up all God's savings, he realized that nothing brought him happiness. Not even the designer labels, the Jaeger, the Armani, the Gucci, the Gap. Nothing helped him. Nothing got him out of his disquiet until he truly surrendered his heart and embraced love. And that's what happens when we say yes to God. God restores us to wellness. He restores us to healing of mind, body and spirit. And the heart is set free. The heart is able to breathe in that love. And when you breathe in that love, the breath of God encapsulates you. And the heart is restored. 
And once the heart is restored, then you're in balance. There is harmony. And the pathway to divine connectedness has been activated and you are free. Thank you for listening. The peace of God be with you today.